Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Sunday's Holy Mass. Sunday, the 16th week in ordinary time. We pray and ask that God may accept our sacrifice and that from this altar, God may hear all of your prayers and your intentions. In today's Mass, I will pray for all of you. I offer these prayers calling the intercession of our Blessed Mother to be with you and to bless you and to bless your families. I'll also offer this Mass for all those who have asked specific prayers, especially those who are struggling at this time, struggling with whatever that besets them, that the grace of God Almighty may be with you. I pray for the sick, pray especially for those who are sick with this virus, that God may help them find healing and grace for recovery. Continue to pray for our doctors, pray for medical personnel, pray for researchers, pray for all others who are working very hard to find a cure or to find a vaccine for this virus, that God may bless their efforts. I'll also want to pray for the leaders of our nation. Pray and ask that leaders from the federal right down to the very local level may take necessary measures to protect our people and to do what is best for our people. I pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today and ask that God may be with you and that God may bless you, that God may keep you and grant you many more years to celebrate. I'll invite you to bring your other intentions and let us offer them from this altar to God's altar in heaven. Our opening hymn today will be O Lord Jesus, I place, my, I place my life in your hands. O Lord Jesus, I place my life in your hands. O Lord Jesus, I place my life in your hands. Lord Jesus, take control of my life and let it be as thou wilt. O Lord Jesus, you are my only hope. O Lord Jesus, you are my defender. Don't let me set no wall, sheep are not a god. Except you alone, don't let me serve no worship another God. Except you alone, O oh Lord, remember that I am for you. Don't let me breathe my last without you. Help me that all my days. I may long to do your will alone. Help me that all my days I may long to do your will alone. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to celebrate God's day. Today is the Lord's day where we offer our worship to our good God. We pray that God may accept our worship today and that his blessings be granted in full measure to meet our every need. And to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. 
May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Lord God, Heavenly King, Lord God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may ever be watched they may be ever watchful in keeping your commandments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is a source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends us. And you taught your people by, their, by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Yes, O oh Lord, you are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O oh Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and merciful. You are good and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn towards me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. We will read a shorter version. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds saying, 
the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed wheat all through the wheat and then went up. When the crop grew and bore fruit, wheat appeared as well. The slaves of the household householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the wheat come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the wheat, you might uproot the wheat with it. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the wheat and tie them into bundles for burning, but gather my wheat into my band. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'd like to wish you a very happy Sunday, and I hope that under these circumstances, today is still very hopeful for you, that today is still very promising for you, and today gives you something to trust, something to believe that God has not abandoned you and will never abandon you. Time and again, Jesus will offer us principles, principles for how to conduct our lives. Now, these principles that the Lord offers us, they yeah, do have heavenly or spiritual implications, but they also have timely implications for every day. And so today, I will I'll only focus on the temporal implications of these principles that the Lord is offering us and how we can use them to improve our lives and to get the best out of life every day. As we listen to this gospel, the Lord uses a concept that I'm sure you can relate to, the concept of an enemy. So, there is the landowner, the farmer, who has a plan for his business. He gets maybe a bank loan, prepares his farm, buys everything, gets all done, and starts a project. He is the owner of the project. He is the CEO, if you might want to call him, or he is the business owner. And then, he has workers. These workers are part of his company. They work for him to make sure he gets the full reward for his efforts and hard work. And then there is an unknown enemy. Not known because the master here or the CEO here does not call this enemy by name. It says an enemy must have done this. That means there is whether a human enemy or some factors that might plan to work against your own plan or your own project or your own business there are some elements there are persons there are spiritual forces call them whatever paul says that there are spiritual forces out there that are consistently working to undermine to subdue and ultimately to distract us from god's plans and purposes the lord confirms that too whether you believe it or whether you know it or not, there are factors out there that are lying in place to make sure we don't get what God plans for us. Yeah, we may call him the devil, but sometimes the devil might also use human agents or use other factors to undermine us. So that is a fact. But the Lord also offers us a template or a cheat sheet, as I call it, on how to address these distractions and how to address these enemies. 
realize this. The Lord did not say here. He didn't go after the enemy. He says, okay, I know who this guy is. I'm going to go after him and make sure. Now, he doesn't do that. That would be called revenge. When you do that, you are no longer in charge. You have become a puppet of the enemy. You are playing in the enemy's stuff, in the enemy's terrain. He has distracted you or she has distracted you or it has distracted you. Whatever it is that is responsible here. Don't let, don't buy into distractions. Now realize if you fish, if fishing is something you do, when you, when you go fishing, all right, you get your line, you get your bait, you go in there. Now you become, by at that moment, you become the enemy trying to get the fish. The fish has its plan for the day to get food to eat. Now you begin, you throw the fish a bait that is technically not food, it's a bait. You show it to it. The fish doesn't realize that. It gets distracted. I'm looking for food. I just found food. And it becomes your own food. Because the fish was playing in your playing your game and playing in your own tough. That's how the enemy functions, and that's how the enemy works. So the Lord, here in this gospel, when he was told about the fact that an enemy has come to plant bad seeds on this field. To make sure that first there is a battle between the good seed and the bad seed for the manure and the fertilizer or whatever may have been used to help the seed, the seed grow and ultimately he did this also pre preempting the fact that the landowner might choose at some point to go with up take out the wheat and in doing that would impact on the harvest because the good seed would not grow well or might even in the process uproot the good seed. So he had a plan on how he would get the owner of this business distracted and let him undermine his own effort just never to get the resource he's looking for from this farm. Now that was the plan of the enemy. The CEO or the, flan, the, the farmer here understood one thing. I had a plan and I'm not going to change my plan. I'm not going to allow my enemy change my plan. Now that's where most of us get it wrong. We allow distractions change our plans. So we sometimes forget our own things and go after this rabbit hole until we waste our time, waste our energy, waste our resources. And by the time we get back, we have lost ground because the enemy just succeeded in distracting us. And now this is true for your health, it's true for your finances, it's true for your marriages, it's true for your children, raising your children, it's true for everything imaginable, for your businesses, whatever it is that you're doing. There are factors and forces that are out there struggling to undermine and to make sure they prey on you and it I exploit you, defraud, and make sure you don't achieve your goal. And that's some of the times where we become accomplices in our own failure because we allow all of these distractions to get our attention and to take us and take our minds away from what we planned to do in the first place. You have your own plan. And work out your plan, stay consistent, Stay focused on your plan and bring it about. That's what the Lord is saying here to us. Now, I, I want to say something about what is happening. You know, with um, this whole thing. Just give me a minute. I want to say something about what is going on, especially here in our country, with, with Russia. Russia is an enemy of the United States. Never been a friend. Will never be a friend. That I know, at least I know enough to know that, that Russia is not our friend. Russia will never be America's friend, at least not now. They are not. They are constantly looking for ways to undermine us in every way, whether to sow divisions using these um, uh, this online trolls of conspiracies, pitching Americans against Americans, because that is the only, it's only when we're fighting at our, 
fighting with ourselves that Russia has a foothold to do whatever Russia wants to do around the world and impact on our interests around the world. That is a fact. I don't need anyone to tell me about that. Now, we will be the props of Russia. If we allow Russia to succeed in derailing America's goal and vision and plan, it is the most outstanding vision any human nation has ever crafted. But we are allowing our enemy to distract and to take our minds off, off of our plan, off of our goal, off of our ideals, off of our values, and getting us to fight each other as though we're no longer brothers and sisters, as though, as though we're no longer the United States. We are now the divided states. It's crazy. But that's a fact. We are now a divided people. But we would be our own worst enemies if we allow an enemy to exploit us and exploit our vulnerabilities, our freedoms so badly that we become props or we become uh, toys in the hands of a foreign power. But that's us at the national level. Now, let, let me bring it back even to the family level. In your marriage, believe it or not, there are people from the beginning who did not support that marriage, who did not want that marriage to happen, who are still working constantly, whether working, act, working actively or inactively, working passively or working in a very real, real fashion to undermine that marriage, to make sure it doesn't work. Now, if you allow yourself to be distracted by those people, I'm telling you, that marriage will have an expiration date at some point. But you must focus on what brought you, two of you, to that place in the first place. Focus on it and make sure you achieve it and realize it. Listen, when we succeed, our enemies are the ones who remain in despair. When we don't, they are the ones who laugh at us. That's a fact. The devil does that every day. Now this is also true for you raising your children. You may have a plan for raising your children. And in some cases, you might be distracted by a lot of other things and you lose focus. And of course, you are going to very soon see that your children are not gonna turn out the way you intended and the way you planned. Because you got distracted either by work, got distracted by whatever else that was happening around you and instead began to feed your children with things that only enabled them and never really brought them, gave them good foundation to grow. Don't allow anything distract you from the things that you value, whatever they are, be it their health, your finances, your marriage, your, your, your family, whatever it is that you care about that you're investing and working on. You build a plan for yourself and let nothing distract you from those plans. Not gossips. Don't let people come and tell you stories. And if they tell you, verify those stories very soon and very quickly. You will realize those stories are meant to sow division, just like foreign powers are doing in our country right now. Believe it or not, we as Christians, we are not expected to have enemies. But that doesn't mean that others don't see us as enemies and plan to work and undermine us. We must not allow them distract. We must not allow anything, any, any factor distract you from the plans that God has for you. Jesus gives us a template here. First, you play your game your own way as you know it, as you plan it, and not listen to the enemy. Don't allow the intentions of the enemy to override like an overdrive, to override your own intentions. If that happens, what, what you end up with is a corrupted version of your own plan. It's just like, it, like, like your like this, um, this device, all right? If it's corrupted, then I lose hold of whatever was here. Someone else corrupts it and he's in charge of it. We don't want our plans to be corrupted by an external agent or an external element. And so we have the blueprint here by, by the Lord Jesus on how to function. I hope and I pray that we would always focus on what is it we want to do and what we want to achieve and not allow these unnecessary distractions whether from the enemy from the devil or from some other individuals distract us from the plans and the purposes god has for us so 
This is a, a spiritual principle, but it's also a physical, an emotional, and a temporal principle that we can use in everything else that we engage in. You would never lose if you follow this blueprint that the Lord offers us here. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of your mind, God, that God loves you very much. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For, our, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Jesus Christ has taught us how to enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray for the coming of that kingdom, knowing that the Holy Spirit is within us, helping us and guiding our, our efforts. Let us pray for our Pope, Pope Francis. Pray for our Bishop, that they may follow, follow God's will and seek the good of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those entrusted with dispensing justice and interpreting the laws, that they may look to Christ as a source of wisdom and guide God's people with commitment to God's commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may wait for God's harvest time and not pass harsh judgments on each other and not allow ourselves to be distracted by the enemy let focus on what on the plans God has for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That seniors in our community may be sustained by our thoughtfulness and friendship, especially in this period where they feel alone and are left alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those in critical care from this virus, that they may feel the grace of God's spirit and the grace for healing and recovery. We pray for our doctors and all medical workers that God may protect them, especially at this moment of great need around our world. Pray for our police. Pray for men and women of our military. Pray for our fire department and all the emergency responders that God may bless them for their sacrifice we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for those who have asked our prayers. Pray for those who are grieving at this time. Pray for people who have birthdays or anniversaries. Pray for young children, especially those with mental or physical disabilities. Pray for children who are sick from this virus. Pray and ask that the grace of God may be with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for those who have died. Pray especially for Congressman John Lewis and the Reverend C.T. Vivian who passed away this weekend. That God may grant them rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother's intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Lord of heaven and earth, hear and grant our petitions, the pleas of your people, expressed by the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion very offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gift of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit all for the salvation, may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lead them all to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus stood bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remain, by Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you and to your loved ones, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the, those who are unable to attend Mass and receive the Eucharist. Pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful God, <clears throat> You are the farmer itself. That's your role. Today we ask, O oh God, that you plant fresh grace into the souls and hearts and minds of your children all around the world, especially those who desire you with every ounce of faith. May they experience the grace of spiritual communion, the nourishment that comes from this sacrament, and the, the blessings and graces that you offer your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the reins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment and express my thanks to all of you for joining us in this Mass. Pray for me as I pray for you every day. And as always, I'd like you to end with this. You are still the delight of God Almighty. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be, I Need Thee Every Hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can tease a fool. I need thee, 